Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So I've said before that we as a country have lost the capacity to do big things. Oftentimes we have the resources to do those things, but the resources, because those things are being transferred to the top 1%, that money is not being spent in a way where we're using it for public collective action. In fact, I don't know the last time where either garnered by the president or by governor that we ourselves decided to do a big thing in china they did a big fucking thing china's first solar power highway will recharge electric cars now it's not china's first solar apparently it's the first solar powered highway in the world now there are downsides to this but ultimately they still did it they built a highway with solar panels with a glassy material on top in order to, for the sun to be able to access those solar panels. The energy that they get, that they suck in from those solar panels will go into essentially powering the highway itself, meaning lights and any excess will go back into the power grid, even getting to the point where it would power the cars themselves. Uh, let's look at this. China has successfully tested its first solar-powered highway, opening the one-kilometer stretch of road to traffic ahead of plans to use it to recharge electric cars. The solar road developed by the Kili Transportation Development Group was opened Thursday in Jinan, the capital city of China's Shandong province. Shandong, that's funny. Shandong, I'm sorry. A year after the project was initially launched, the move has been hailed by the developers as another major breakthrough in a field of photovoltaic pavements. The panels, covering 5,874 square meters, have a total installed capacity of 800 kilowatts, according to the project's developer. Electricity produced by the test section will be used to power highway lights, signboards, surveillance cameras, tunnels, and toll gates facilities. Surplus power will be supplied to the state grid. Zhu Chun Fu, that's a badass name, Chun Fu, the group's chairman told uh, Zinao. Zinha. I'm sorry, I'm murdering these names. In the future, it's hoped the innovative panel will allow for wireless charging of electric vehicles, melt snow, and provide internet connection. The photovoltaic road section also features ports with access to information collecting devices. The company described the project as the world's first freeway voltaic road test section. Elsewhere, France opened its first solar road last year. The one kilometer road reportedly cost more than five million to build. Okay, I'm sorry, this I'm wrong on this. This is not the first in the world. This is, I thought I read it was the first in the world in another article. It is the first in China. Apparently France has opened one last year. Zhu did not reveal the cost of Jinan Solar Road, but said it was half of similar projects in the country. With the development of solar panels in China, the cost can be further reduced, he said. Now, this is what they mean when they say the cost is reduced. This is not a perfect solution. This is somewhat of a test bed. This is almost like a sandbox version of this. They're testing it to see the efficacy of it, of using something like this. As they do this, they get better at doing this, and the price tag goes down, but there are certain problems associated with it. One problem that was mentioned is the cost. It's extremely expensive to do something like this, even for just one kilometer. The second problem has to do with the sunlight itself, meaning if cars are on a road, can the sunlight actually get to the vehicles itself, or actually get to the voltaic cells? I would imagine you would get some, but there's somewhat of an irony of you get more when there are less cars on the road. Um, but it's highway. You're supposed to have cars on the road. So there will be somewhat of a, de uh, a depreciation in the amount with the more cars or heavier traffic that's on the road itself. The third issue that was brought up had to do with the substance itself. Meaning for the voltaic cells to work, you have to put some substance over top that's somewhat clear. Meaning if you're using, um, you have to use less gravel. The material itself may be somewhat slick in particular conditions and don't necessarily provide enough of, of friction for the car to grasp onto. Those are the, the negatives. But I would say the negatives don't matter in this. This is a test case. This is a sandbox. They're trying and testing the technology to see how they can make it better, how they can make it cheaper. And then it's an amazing fucking idea. Now, personally, I, I would, I'm curious about whether or not piezoelectric motors would have worked. Meaning if you could have put some kind of piezoelectric sensor that as movement goes on to the, to the, 
to the road, that movement is transferred into this kind of electrical energy and that electrical energy is harnessed and used for whatever reasons. I, I, I don't necessarily know why they use solar power as opposed to a piezoelectric thing, and I may be talking to my ass on this. Um, but it might have been a situation where the solar powers were cheaper and the piezoelectric motor wasn't, you know, the, the price didn't work. Whatever the reason, it is an awesome thing. I mean, think of the potential for this. You're talking about electric cars that are automatically being charged the more they drive. Meaning Bob gets on the road, Bob needs to go from here to New York. And because there's sections of the road that have this kind of automatic charging from the nuclear power or from the power station, meaning as it drives on, the solar power is automatically charging the car. It's possible for him to go from point A to point B without having to stop for gas because the electricity itself, based on the technology, is able to fill the car or to or to power the car as the car is driving over that particular section of the road. They're not there yet. But just from where they are, they can see to that point, if that makes sense. Like you're talking about doing something big, doing something scientific and doing something that's somewhat experimental, not for the sake purely of profit, but for the sake of the technology itself. Can we get this to work? Can we get this to make people's lives easier as they go from point A to point B? Can we cut down our energy requirement using fossil fuels for that energy? Can we find another source of energy to power our cars and our devices? And considering roads are kind of ubiquitous, they're all over the place. It's somewhat of a novel idea to say, let's put these on the roads. Let's put these on the roads. Maybe we can do two things at once. I would add, hey, let's put these on houses. Let's make houses in a way that each house always has those solar panels associated with it to make those things energy independent. I would go further with that like nobody's business. But at the very least, this is what they're testing. Now, China is a heavy user of fossil fuels. So the idea of China trying to cut back on the fossil fuel thing, I applaud it. I applaud it. The person in Salon was tearing it down. They were going after it. Essentially, you know, showing all of the flaws and all of the bad things because he felt like it was becoming a fad. It is a test case. Do you understand the concept of the word test case? Neil Patel. Does Neil Patel understand what a test case is? Meaning they're doing this for experimental reasons. I don't think they said that this is the end all be all of this particular technology. They did it in France. In this case, they said they were able to do it cheaper in China and they can get the price down further. If you can come up with a system that would allow cars to travel on the road with those cars being automatically charged as those cars travel, that is an amazing fucking thing. Not only would they give more car blanche to use electric cars, it gets rid of the issue that's fundamental with the electric cars that you don't have with gas cars. This thing of the, the low gas mileage. It's like going from point A to point B, and if I don't have anything to fill up with an electric station, then I can't make that trip using my electric car. If you have segments of the road or segments of a highway that allows your car to automatically recharge, that's a win-win. You would start building infrastructure to start enticing people to use and buy electric cars. If the government itself said, we're going to do a green energy new deal and we're going to find experiments, with tech, we're going to experiment with technology like this. We're going to experiment with maybe piezoelectric motors in certain parts. We're going to experiment in finding novel ways to collect energy to use for the city that doesn't necessarily need to use fossil fuels. I love this idea. I love this idea. I understand it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a test case. I love it. I mean, the alternative is to do nothing. It kills me that we've lost the capacity to do big things. And it is somewhat of a damning indictment in our society to realize that each and everything that takes place has to some degree have some component of somebody making a buck off of it, as opposed to the government itself taking upon itself to actually do big things, to do experiments like this, to try to find ways around the climate issues, meaning the way we use and harvest energy. There are better ways. At the very least, China may have many faults, but at the very least, their government is looking for other ways to do energy production. They should be applauded for that. And that needs to be expanded even here in the United States. Maybe not this particular project, but another big fucking project that would draw eyes and attention. And they would get it across that, yes, we still have the capacity to do 
big things and not just big things for the sake of big things big things with this idea of we have a larger world we have an environmental catastrophe that's at stake I have no expectation of that being done under trump but the first president that gets in office oh man I, I just missed this thing this i have this kennedy thing in my head this thing of we're going to the moon not because it's easy because it's hard and i think at the presidents that i've had in my lifetime i know of none that were that grandiose i know of none that were even a percentage that grandiose china is building solar power highways we don't even have high speed rail we put 86 billion dollars on a military budget that was a trillion dollars we don't even have, have we don't even have high speed rail we don't even have medicare or medical systems for all we don't even have the ability for kids to go to school without thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in debt we have none of that stuff we have fundamentally lost the capacity to do big things and essentially the plutocrats have hollowed this country out drained it of resources putting their money firmly to the top with the government itself starved for resources and starved for even an inclination to try to do something like this good job china good job for all of your faults for all of your foibles for all of the things that you know may be wrong with your country at least on this one you're willing to try new things and not new things again not just for the sake of new things but new things with this idea of we need to do something about the amount of energy that we consume and the way to which we consume that energy. And to some degree, it's almost this kind of admission of we believe climate change is a real thing and we ourselves want to get around this particular issue or get our hands on this particular issue. Again, I'm not saying China is perfect. I'm not saying China has a great system. I am saying in this very specific case, at the very least, they're aware of the wider reality of climate change and they're making choices. In their government even though this is costing them money and even though this is not necessarily a perfect thing they're at the very least making choices to test ways to try to get around the way that they use energy and again they should be applauded for that good job china and by the way the united states we have our solar farms so don't get me wrong solar energy in the united states has been one of the main um booms in fact if i'm not mistaken there were more jobs created from solar energy than there were for oil and gas etc so don't get me wrong but I find this approach extraordinarily novel. We're on the highway, we're on the roads constantly. If something like this can be found or used as a solution, you automatically, A, it, the, the resources that it would take to get stretches of a road and everything like that means more jobs and so forth. But B, the energy production itself, you create an incentive for people to use electric cars. You create an incentive with this idea of green energy, meaning it's a win-win. You're creating jobs. The companies that are creating these particular things are going to get a boon. Um, the materials that need to be created, meaning the harvesting and all that stuff, there's a boon to all of these industries going all the way down the line. Not to mention it's for the best of the country, meaning if we can find ways for energy production and if for once when we do something, we do it for the American public. Meaning, if the American public is using those cars and if they're driving on those things, the energy that's required or the energy that's harvested in order to fuel those vehicles, if you can get to technology to that point that as the car drives on it, the car is charged and invigorated. If you can do that, oh man, oh man, that would be amazing. That would be fucking amazing. Now, I would say that if China is working on this technology and China beats you to the punch, Somebody in China is going to make a lot of money because I guarantee you that other states, if you can prove the technology does what you say it does, if you can get the price down, if you can get the price down, and if you can make sure that this thing works the way that you say it works, this would be fucking amazing. This would be amazing. I just wish we got in on some of this stuff. That's all. I, I, I like this idea. I understand it's a sandbox thing. I just wish we got in on it. Good job, China. All right, guys, I'll end it at that. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe. And of course, you can always support through Patreon. Thanks, guys.